always know what season you're in. Today is my birthday, my 48th birthday. It feels wild. The years go by and it's like incredible to believe that I'm 48 years old. At the same time, when I look back at my life and my experiences, I'm like, yeah, I guess, <laughs> I guess that was 48 years. Getting to be this age as a victim of bullying, it's huge. Anyone who has been in a situation where you have thought about ending it, when you choose not to and year by year goes by and you, you learn what life is all about, you witness all of the things that you would have missed out on, all the pieces of your journey that fall into place every year that goes by, it just feels, it feels huge. Everyone loves their birthday and birthdays mean a lot to everyone. They mean something to everyone. But to me, it just, it's a reminder that I'm supposed to be here. It's a reminder that I have something to offer, that I belong here. To be able to recognize that year after year, for me, it's huge. Another big piece for me is that my mom, my mom passed away when she was 36 years old. There were some times in my young adulthood that I felt like, I always felt that I wasn't going to live long. I wonder if anyone can relate to that. Every year just feels like a bit of a defiance to what it is that I always thought of myself, all the ideas that I always had of myself. And because my mom passed away at 36, when I hit my 36th birthday, and almost even more importantly, when I hit my 37th birthday, and I realized that I was going to be here longer than her. It was a bit of a reality check for me. It was a bit of a wake up call for me that, okay, life is gonna keep happening and you're gonna have to figure something out. <laughs> I come from a generation and from a time frame where people like me just fought to stay alive. We just fought to survive. You don't even have a vision for yourself post survival. Once you realize that you are surviving and that you are still here, like what happens after survival? You survive, now what? But I am surviving and I think that it is a powerful story to share. I hope to keep talking about it so that I do find better ways to articulate that journey and to speak on it. For now, I'm just doing the best that I can. One of the things that I always hear from people is that they feel like I look young. So listen, I embrace it. I'm happy to look young. If people ask me, what's my secret? <laughs> Usually I'll say something like sunscreen because <laughs> I have, you know, for whatever reason, my mom was really big into beauty and, um, and into skincare products. And so I think that as a kid, I was always playing in her skincare products. I have been wearing sunscreen probably since I was 13 years old. So don't let nobody tell you that sunscreen does not work. Black, not cracking or what you still need to wear a sunscreen. But I also have always been using skincare products with active ingredients. And I think even in my 20s, I was doing AHAs and BHAs and exfoliating and all that kind of stuff. And I just love the way that it made my skin look. So sunscreen and the exfoliation. But I think what really keeps me looking and feeling young is keeping my life experience fresh. And maybe that does come from feeling like I wasn't gonna be here for very long because I always just kind of like wasn't afraid of change. I've never been afraid of taking on something new or being very clear and honest with myself about when a situation was no longer serving me and just sort of positively moving on. And I think that that is one of the reasons why I have stayed in New York City for as long as I have. The first year was kind of tough, but I stayed and I've been here now for 15 years I stuck it out in New York I think it's because I kept growing here and I kept having fresh experiences here New York is constantly changing and so it gives me something new to experience I've also lived in Hong Kong I lived in Germany I have lived in LA just having all of those experiences in my life has kept it fresh for me when I transitioned out of working in entertainment that was probably pretty hard that had been something that I had really resonated and connected with 
almost my entire life when I was growing up. I mean, that's what I thought that I would be doing. That's what I always wanted. And at a certain point, there was a turning point where it stopped serving me. Whatever needs that I had, that that fulfilled, that I had accomplished it and moved on, I needed other kinds of challenges in order to keep growing. Moving to New York really afforded me that, to have some growth in other areas. I've had some real growth here. I'm very grateful that I moved to New York. But yeah, keeping it fresh is the secret to, to looking young, to feeling young. I think so many people fear that. They find comfort in repetition. There's nothing wrong with that. Having less stress, having less change. For me, it's the opposite. I feel like I can live a new life. I never feel stuck. I'm trying to learn to find a happy medium between being consistent and not feeling stuck. That's a journey that a lot of creative people go through. I'm learning to conquer it. Yeah, 48 years old. 48 is wild. So what does growth look like at 48? I think the one area that I really have veered focus away from is my spirit. I grew up in a Christian home. The Bible was a big part of our teachings and of our development. I do remember a scripture that said, I may be misquoting it, but always know what season you're in. And for me, that is so important and it resonates so much because when I talk about having had four lifetimes, it's really just seasons. It's really just seasons that are all different. The season that I'm in now, I think is one of spiritual growth. It's one of spiritual nurturing because I grew up in a home where we went to church every Sunday. Even if I didn't believe all of the teachings, it was a check-in point for me to be aware of where I was spiritually. And I even went to church a lot as an adult just to create those check-in points, just to have that safe space. I kind of had a pivot point when I was going to a church in LA where a lot of entertainers and performers went. I had been going there for a while and I was really feeling at home. One day, the pastor just decided to do a sermon where he really went in on the gays. <laughs> And, you know, that was kind of a turning point for me in, in my journey with church. The idea of knowing what season you're in really sticks for me. The season that I am in now is just one of spiritual nurturing, holistic health. It's the body, it's the spirit, all of it has to align. I have set that as a goal for myself. I am creating that alignment every day. that you're completely renewing yourself with every single breath and how embodying small, tiny habits every day allow that change to happen in your life so that you can fulfill the goals that you wish to. you ever get into one of those moods when you feel like if lasers could shoot out of your eyes, everybody would be dead? <laughs> I am about to go to Mike's Tech Shop, which is the data recovery place that I, that I left my computer at almost three weeks ago. They're basically saying that they're waiting for another technician that's on vacation because they don't know if they can get the data off and there's like all this drama. So essentially I'm about to go in there and try to get at least the minimum amount of data that I need off of there. Hopefully they don't have to call the police on my ass. Smile on my face. <laughs> uh, 
I have not had much sleep because I've been up off and on all night. <sighs> Let's rewind. Yesterday I got a call from Mike's Tech Shop, which is the data recovery place that was working on my computer. They were telling me that they needed to keep it for another week. They needed a senior technician to come in and have a look at it because um, it's a holiday weekend, July 4th, that person's out of town. My gut just said, go get your computer, just go get it. I can open the computer in safe mode, so maybe I can just airdrop the files that I need for that first vlog. I picked up the computer, I tried there just to see if like, is the airdrop gonna work? It did seem like it was working, but it, it looked like it was gonna take a long time. So I basically had to just leave with the computer and try to do the airdrop at home. Well, airdrops are not terribly reliable, but you know, when they work, they work. Once I got the airdrop to work, it took about four hours. I should have just gone to sleep, but me being on pins and needles, I just kept checking the airdrop status to make sure that it wasn't failing. Four hours later, it finally went through and that was probably about four o'clock in the morning. So of course, then I decided to <laughs> go into CapCut, transfer the project and start relinking all the files, which took some time. It's now 8.30 in the morning and I have to be at work at 10, mind you. But the first vlog, it's exporting now in CapCut. So in the next 10 minutes or so, I should have a first vlog. As of right now, it looks like I'm in good shape. I knew something was gonna work out. I knew that it was gonna work out. It looks like we're in good shape. I've been around, you stayed away. Oh, I won't let it show. You gotta hold on to me. I remember the sound of us being loud. So loud, so loud. It is my birthday weekend and I have to work. I'm having lunch at the well right now. I got my computer, I'm uploading my vlogs. Everything is moving in a positive direction. 48 years old, y'all. It's incredible how fast life can go and you feel like you have all the time in the world. Listen, you don't, you gotta live it. You gotta live it to the fullest. Enjoy the simple things. And speaking of that, I'm about to eat this salad. I have been invited by a friend of mine who works for Skin Spirit to come and have a treatment. I'm gonna be having a facial as well as micro penning, which I've never had before. I'm guessing it's kind of like a version of micro needling. So I'm gonna be doing a really simplified skincare routine this morning because I know they're gonna just wash it off during the actual facial. So when I cleanse this morning, I used the Ordinary's Glycolipid Skin Cleanser. And um, you're gonna be seeing quite a bit of the Ordinary products in this particular skincare routine, but I do incorporate a few other brands in my skincare routine overall. But in this particular routine, I'm keeping it very simple. So you're gonna be seeing a lot of products from The Ordinary. The first thing that I like to apply after I've cleansed, this is actually a new product from The Ordinary. This is their Saccharomyces Ferment 30% Milky Toner. Like I said, it's a newer product. I really love it. I have a friend that works for The Ordinary, so they recommended it to me. And it's basically like a hydrating toner that is really milky and it just gives your skin a nice hydrated glowy kind of look as a person that's 48 um every time i post about my birthday on any social media people are always commenting that my skin looks good and asking like what i use you know the big pieces that i can say is that i have been wearing sunscreen since i was like a teenager i always sort of played around in my mom's skincare products or my grandmother's skincare products and they always had moisturizers and sunscreens and exfoliants and stuff like that just sort of around the house in the bathrooms so i always just sort of played in those products and and as I got older, I just kept using them, you know? So I can honestly say exfoliation and sun protection are gonna be your best friends in the anti-aging game. After the toner, I usually go in with the multi-peptide plus copper peptides. Again, this is gonna get wiped off during the facial, but I still like to have the bit of hydration that this particular serum provides. It's actually like a blue color. You want your copper peptides to be 
a really nice rich blue color. That's how you know you're getting a good amount of the active copper ingredient. So I've toned, I've done a simple copper peptide serum. So as my last step, I'm gonna be doing my moisturizer plus sunscreen. Um, and for that, I actually use, people don't even, people are not, hip to this, but this is the Aesop Avail Face Moisturizing Lotion Plus Sunscreen. This is only an SPF 25, but when I tell you that I've worn SPF 50s and still ended up with hyperpigmentation, still ended up with sun damage, and I can wear this 25, like I don't have any kind of hyperpigmentation, any kind of white cast, which is important, like this doesn't leave any kind of a cast. So this is what I use, and I just keep going back to this even when I try to do um, stronger SPFs. I think what I'm gonna do next is try the Avail, the, the body version of this, because it does have an SPF 50, and just so I get more sun protection, because I do know that I overall do like this particular sunscreen. I have tried others and I keep coming back to it. You'll notice that I also put sunscreen like on the side of my head and around my neck, um, because those are all areas that are exposed to the sun. Listen, it's all about this Aquaphor. I used to be addicted to Carmex. Then I started using just this, which is such so much more simple, but it's so much more effective. I find that I can apply this sometimes once a day and be good. When I was using Carmex and other lip products, I found that I was constantly reapplying that throughout the day, which was a nice feeling. I mean, it's like you get this sort of sensory feeling from putting on a lip balm and you know what I mean? Like, I love that. But in terms of just like really having a good moisturizer for my lips, that's the one. Those are the products that I use today. I'll do a more extensive skincare routine in some future videos. Now, I will say that the Aesop, the sunscreen, as you can see, it leaves a dewy look. So if you're particularly oily, you might not like it, or you can kind of like wait for it to settle in a little bit and then kind of blot the finish down. But that's what I use, and I don't mind having kind of a dewier look. It doesn't bother me. I personally kind of like that look. With that being said, I gotta get going because I don't want to be late for this appointment. I'm excited to see how this treatment goes. I'm definitely gonna be taking you along for the journey, so let's get out of here before I end up being late. Just got off the train and when I tell you that this heat is so ratchet, I'm sweaty. It is not cute at all. Looks like I'm gonna arrive just in time for my appointment because I definitely cut it close. Is, is, is an exfoliating tip, right? Okay. So this almost feels like when it's dragged on the skin, it almost feels like a cat's tongue. Okay. So it's just, you know, it's very mild, but you're getting a really nice, even exfoliation from it. Okay, so I just had my consultation and I'm about to get dressed for the actual treatment. They did say that I could film a little bit of the treatment, so you're gonna get the exclusive, okay? <music> Some milky fun stuff like whatever swirling mm -hmm. around 
This was just regular fluid. Uh, the facial was amazing. Jillian, who was my provider, was outstanding. I'm gonna try to tag her. Skin Spirit in Tribeca. I had a great experience. Now I'm gonna actually try to hit up Sephora. I wanna try this Salt and Stone body spray because I've been really into Hinoki ever since I got that Element Brooklyn body wash. Salt and Stone has a Hinoki body spray. I wanna see if I like it. So the gag is they don't carry salt and stone at that particular Sephora. There's another Sephora that's not too far. So I'm gonna swing over to that Sephora and see if they have it there. Okay, so I'm coming up to the other Sephora. Let's see if they have it here. I just tried this bergamot hinoki body spray and it's the one so we're gonna grab that so as it turned out the one that i liked wasn't even the one that i came to see so i ended up comparing the two and decided not to get either so i ended up getting this boy smells hinoki phantom instead and they had it in a smaller size so i'm just gonna like live with it for a little bit and see if i actually like it i'm gonna actually grab a slice from my pie it's one of my favorite little pizza places let's get into that It is hot outside. And I mean, it's the kind of ugly hot. I don't know if you can hear my air conditioner going in the background, but we're just gonna have to make it work. Those of us who live in climates where we have winter, we'd be begging for it to be summer. But this is definitely one of those not so cute kind of days. Like it is muggy, it is hot. The train stations are nasty and hot and musty. Uh-uh, it's, it's not cute, but I made it home, I got my AC on. So I went into Sephora, as I mentioned, I ended up picking up this Boy Smells Hinoki Phantom. I've been chasing down Hinoki fragrances ever since I got that Element Brooklyn body wash that's supposed to be kind of like a dupe of the Lalabo Hinoki body wash. And this smells different, but it definitely, it's, I guess it's in the same kind of category. It's green, it's fresh. I didn't like the Salt and Stone one at all. Salt and Stone had a, like a Hinoki, I think it was Hinoki Bergamot or something like that. I actually did not like it at all. It just smelled too citrusy, which is fine. It didn't smell bad at all, don't get me wrong. Um, but I say I didn't like it because it just wasn't what I was looking for. I was definitely looking for more like a woodsy but fresh kind of like vibe. By mistake, I actually sprayed on myself Black Rose and Oud. And that actually I liked. Um, because it wasn't what I was looking for, I didn't pick it up, but it's possible that I might just try that on a different day when I have a clean slate. Um, but I did end up picking this up and I do like this fragrance. It doesn't smell like the Hinoki body wash, but I do like it. And in fact, I took a couple of spritzes around my apartment and I like this as a room spray and i really like when i can find fragrances that i can use as a room spray because i feel like you can just spray a couple of spritzes of it and it has a lot of staying power sometimes those fragrances are too rich and too strong or too cologne smelling for a room where this actually does smell like an incense like an exotic incense or like a really expensive candle for right now i'm going to spray it around my room i might use it as a body fragrance a few times just to kind of like get a feel for whether or not i like how it smells on me throughout the day and then worst case scenario i'll get the large size just to use as a room spray or i'll decide between that and the candle but sometimes i don't always want to burn a candle to get a fragrance if this has staying power as a spray it's actually going to be kind of like a little bit more worth the money but i want to go back like i said and try that black rose and oud salt and stone fragrance and just see 
if I like it better without really looking for a Hinoki fragrance. My facial went really well. I was expecting that I was gonna have like more um, downtime. It's just a couple hours later. I don't have any redness or any tenderness or it doesn't feel tight or anything like that. So I'm excited that I don't have any downtime and I can pretty much just go on with life. Thank you so much to my friends over at Skin Spirit in Tribeca. I loved my facial and I think that my skin loved it too. My birthday week has gone so well and I just took a couple of extra days off this week. I am just happy that I've got some downtime, some much needed downtime, some much needed recovery time. For right now, I'm chilling. I'm chilling, y'all. <laughs> Honestly, I have no complaints about my birthday week. I set a goal, I set an agenda for myself to really just focus on being spiritually and holistically aligned. We're in a good place. So what's to be learned from a 48 year old gay black man living in New York City? <laughs> keep it fresh, keep your energy fresh, keep your experiences fresh, keep your journey fresh. Focus on your alignment mentally, spiritually, and physically. You know, I think sometimes we focus so much on the physical. We go to gyms, we, we get Botox. There is a, another level of self-care and alignment that really focuses on the spiritual and on the mental. And don't forget that. Don't forget the spiritual because if you're not protecting your spirit, if you're not taking care of your spirit, if you're not aligning your spirit, being mentally as healthy and as aligned as you are physically, you'll start to notice that you're struggling in areas where you normally would thrive. You have to just keep checking in, keep checking in spiritually and keep doing that work. Hey, if you made it this far in the video, please like and subscribe and alignment, growth and alignment. Stay in that space, you will always be young.